In this video I prepared for you a React Hook form crash course where you will learn everything that you need to know about this library for everyday development. And the first question is why do we need a library to build forms inside React and what makes React Hook form special? Obviously we can build a form without any libraries in React, but it is quite tedious, we need to implement things like validation, blur out, highlighting errors and a lot of stuff. And this is exactly the same stuff that we are using for any form. This is why using a library is a better choice. And there are several popular libraries nowadays and one of the most popular are React Hook Form. It has all features that you need to implement any kind of forms, it is leveraging hooks and additionally creators are super focused on high performance. So let's start with a simple example of React Hook Form usage. And as you can see here, I already prepared for us a markup of register form. We have here username, email and password and register button. And here is how it looks inside my code. It is just a single component register with the form inside and three different classes, field, label and input. And here we have our username, email and password. Now how we can bind this library to our form? First of all, we must install this package. This is why we are writing npm install react hooks form. After this, what we must import on the top is use form and we are getting it from react hook form. And inside our component we can use it just like a normal hook and back we are getting an object with lots of properties. And what we want to get here are two properties, first of all register and secondly handle submit. And here we are calling our use form without any arguments. Now it is important to remember here we are getting register lowercase which is related to our library. But my component is called register because this is a register form and they don't have anything in common. First of all, let's use this handle submit. So on our form, we must implement on submit method like normally, but inside we are providing handle submit and we must provide a callback inside, for example, on submit. And now here on the top, we must create this on submit function where we are getting data. And this data are all our fields from the form. So here we can console log our data after submission. So again, inside on submit, we are providing handle submit from this library. And inside it, we are providing a callback on submit that we just created. Our next step is to register every single input. And in order to do that, we must spread all attributes from the register inside our element. This is why here in brackets we are spreading register and this is a function and we are calling it with the name of this field. In our case here we are talking about field username so we can write it as lowercase username. So what it does it adds lots of different attributes for our input. So we don't need to implement them ourselves. And exactly the same we are doing for every single field. For example, here we have an email and also a password. So here we will have register password. So we successfully created a handle submit function and binded every single input with this register function. Let's have a look. As you can see in browser, here is our form and I'm clicking register. And this is what we are getting inside console. Here is our data that we console log inside our handle submit and we are getting the object with three fields, email, password and username. If I will type something inside our form, then we will get this information directly inside handle submit. And this is the simplest usage of React hook form. Now inside on submit we can write any logic regarding form that we need to. For example, we can make an API call to the backend with the data that we prepared. But there is one more thing that I highly recommend you to do inside this library. Here we used use form, but we didn't provide a default state of our form. And it makes a lot of sense even if all your fields are empty, at least so you can see all your fields in one place and you understand what initial values you have. This is why here inside use form we can provide an object with parameters. And there is a field which is called default values and inside we must provide all default values for all our fields. In our case it is a username, it's an empty string, then we have an email, it is an empty string and the password, it is an empty string. Inside browser we won't notice any changes because actually use form understood what fields we have and all these fields have an empty string by default. 
Nevertheless, it is really nice to provide default value like this. And if you are implementing form like editing of the article, for example, and you need to prefill your form, then there is only a single good possibility, and this is the default values, which actually means inside your component you got all your fields, for example, regarding article, and then you can prefill your form with all these values. In our case, we don't need to do that because we are registering a user. The next super important use case that you for sure have in your application is reusing some components of the form. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have lots of advanced courses on different web technologies where we create real applications and prepare for the interviews. You can find the link in the description box below. Now let's jump back into the video. For example, as you can see here, this code like field, label and an input can be moved in shareable component, and it is completely possible to implement this together with React hook form. This is why here on the top I can create an input component and just the structure here, for example, a label and register. And actually register is exactly all properties that we are getting from React hook form. Now what I want to do, I want to take the whole div class field and move it inside this component. And we need to return this markup. So here is our div class field name, label, and we want to render this label inside. And now instead of this username, we can provide here register and label that we got from the outside. Which actually means the code is extremely simple and we can reuse it in the whole application. This is why now, instead of all this code, we can just write input and provide inside a label, which in our case will be username, and also a register, which will be a register. Now we can remove this code completely, and as you can see in browser, our username is there, and it is working in exactly the same case like previously, and we don't have any changes. Which actually means you can easily implement shareable components and just provide this register function inside. The next important thing that you for sure need in your forms is obviously client validation. And this is how it is done in the documentation by default, and this is not the best approach. As you can see here in documentation, they also have a form with inputs and register, and as a second parameter inside register you can provide an object with validations. Like for example required true or maximum length 20 symbols. Additionally, you can provide patterns, but realistically they are not super readable here. And also, I really don't like that we are writing so much inside our markup, because it becomes unsupportable. But if you write code like this, then you can get errors out of the box. But there is much more flexible approach if you want to create a schema of error validation for your form, and this is exactly what I want to show you now. As you can see here in documentation, they have schema validations which are possible for this library, and they support such libraries like yup, zord, and lots of others. This is why here I want to show you the example with yup library, but you can use any of them, the result will be exactly the same. So we must jump inside console and write npm install yup. It allows us to create a schema validation. Now inside our project we can simply import star as yup from yup. Now even before our component we can write a validation schema for our form. This is why here let's name it validation schema and here we are using yup.object, which actually means our whole schema is an object and it is required. Now inside we must specify all fields of our forms and any validation rules that we want to apply. For example, here we can write that we have a username and we are writing that this is a string, this is why yup string dot required and inside required we can write an error message for example missing username now we can copy paste this line several times and change it to email and write missing email because we also need a required validation and the last one is our password and here is missing password as you can see here it is much easier to understand what rules you have and you can apply lots of rules here outside of your markup Additionally to that, you are getting lots of helper functions inside yup, for example. Let's say that we want to validate email. Instead of writing custom regular expressions inside your markup, we can simply write here after required dot email and provide inside an error message in valid email format. 
but this is not all. In order to apply this schema, we must install an additional library, which is an extension of React hook form. So this is not some other library. This is a part of React hook form. So we're jumping to the console and we're writing npm install add hook form slash resolvers. Now, after installation here on the top, we can import a UP resolver from hook forms resolvers, which actually means we want to resolve a schema from the UP and all resolvers for different libraries react hook forms pack in additional library. This is why here inside use form now we can provide a resolver. And as a value, we are calling here UP resolver and we are providing inside our validation schema which actually means with this single liner we told React hook forms that we have a validation schema like this and as it is made with yup, we must resolve it by using function yup resolver from our library. What is really nice about such validation is that we don't need to change our markup at all. All these fields will be validated, but our validation schema is outside of the component. But as you can see in browser, we are getting an error. The requested module does not provide an export named UP resolver. This is actually happening because here at the end of the import, I forgot to write slash UP. As you can see now, we don't have any errors. I'm hitting register, but as you can see, nothing happens. Actually, my first field is being focused, but that's it. We don't have handle submit anymore. Why it happens? because our form is validated and we never come to handle submit if we have any errors. This is why what we want to do now, we want to read errors from our library. So here we must read a form state from our use form and what we want to do is get from it just errors. This is why here we are destructuring errors and after this we can console log our errors to check what we are getting inside. As you can see in browser, by default we are getting console log errors, but the object is empty. Now here I am hitting register and we are getting error validation, which actually means this is the moment when we want to render our error validation. This is what we are getting here. We are getting all our fields like email, password and username. These are fields with errors and we are getting here a message like missing email, missing password, missing username and the type which actually means we can use all this information to render error messages inside our form. This is why let's scroll inside our form and after our input I want to render an error, but only if there is an error in this field. This is why here we need to check that inside errors, which is an object, we have a username and in this case we want to render a span with an error. So inside this span we want a class name, which will be an error. And here we want to render the error message. So it is errors.username.message. And additionally here you can check a type if you need to. In our case the type was required, but we don't really care. We simply render an error message. Now I can copy paste the same code and put it in all three places. In the second field it will be errors email and here we are reading errors.email.message and in the last one it is errors.password and it is errors.password.message. As you can see in browser after page reload nothing is rendered, we don't have any errors, but now I am hitting register and we are getting these spans like missing username, missing email and missing password. But now when I start typing something, as you can see errors were re-rendered and we don't get username anymore, which is completely correct. This is not a field with error. But now here I am typing something inside email and we're getting an invalid email format message, which is absolutely correct. But only after we typed all our fields correctly, we won't get any errors, we can click register and now we're getting inside our handle submit and we're getting access to all our data which actually means if our form is invalid, we never get to handle submit. So now you know how to implement client error messages inside this library. But what about backend error messages? If we're hitting here register and we're getting some error, like for example, email is already taken, how we can render these errors? First of all, I want to install additional package, which is called Axios to make an API call. After this here on the top, I can import Axios from Axios. And inside our handle submit, what we want to do is to make an API call. And here I will use a real world IO public API to register a user. This is why here I'm writing Axios post and the URL will be HTTPS. 
API real world IO slash API slash users. And as a second parameter, we must provide an object with field user, and inside will be all these three fields. In our case, it is just data. And after this, we have a then, and here will be a correct response. So what I want to write inside is console log success, and here is our response that we got from the API. But additionally to that, I want to write cache because we might get a validation error. And in this case, I want to console log an error, so we can check what we are getting inside. I'm hitting here enter, and as you can see, we got success, which actually means we made a real request to an API, and here is our response. Our user was successfully registered, and this is all information that we got back. But in our case, we are interested in validation errors. This is why here I will hit register again, and in this case, we got an error, because this email is already taken. So here we can see our error, and inside the response, we can get the whole information, but we are interested only in validation errors. And inside data, we have our errors, and we have fields like email and username, and both return for us has already been taken. This is awesome, but the question is how we can take this information and put it inside our form. And in order to do that, we can take setter function from our library. This is why here, inside our destructuring, we can additionally get setter function, and we can use it here to set any field to the error state. This is why here I want to check that if we are getting error.response.errors.email, so we have an error in the email from the backend, we want to set error in that field. So as a first argument, we are providing here our email in the form, and as a second argument, it will be an object with the type and here I want to write server, so we at least know that the type is not client validation, and additionally message, and our message will be exactly what we got from the backend, so it is error.response.dataErrors.email, and as you saw, it was an array with at least one message. This is why I will simply render here the first message in the list. Now we need to do exactly the same with other fields, so here will be not email, but username, and we want to set our error to username, and the type will be server, and the message will come from username0. And the same is going with the password. So here we are getting our password, we are setting our error to password, and we are reading data from password0. Let's check if it's working. I want to type here a user that I know for sure is taken because I created it previously. Now here I will provide some password and hit register. As you can see here, we directly get an error, cannot read properties of undefined written email. And it happens because here I forgot to write field data before errors. So everywhere it should be response.data and only then errors. Let's try again, I am hitting register, and now we successfully got this errors from the backend, and we rendered it on the screen inside our form. So our username has already been taken, and the email is also taken. But inside React there is one more library which is also popular, and it is called Formic. If you want to know more how to implement a form with Formic inside React, make sure to check this video also.